New at 11, a recent report by the DEA reveals alarming trends when it comes to dangerous and highly addictive drugs. Here in Florida, more deadly drug mixtures are being seized, and there's also been a rise in children ending up in emergency rooms. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avigny covers DEA investigations. He's joining us live with an in-depth look into the agency's newest threat assessment. Eric. Well, Joy, as you know, uh, drug activity here on the streets is nothing new, but a, uh, uh, the recent drug trends that have been outlined in this new report are so disturbing that it's not only about uh, the crime, it's also about uh, the uh, health concerns uh, that appear to be getting worse and not better. While plant-based drugs like cocaine and heroin continue to be smuggled into the U.S. and sold on the streets, Jacksonville DEA Assistant Special Agent in Charge Mike Dubet says recent data show plant-based drugs are now taking a back seat. We've seen a significant switch from plant-based drugs to synthetic drugs. According to the CDC, synthetic opioids like fentanyl accounted for 70% of overdose deaths across the U.S. Synthetic stimulants like methamphetamine accounted for 30% of overdose deaths. According to the DEA, the Sinaloa Cartel and Cartel Jalisco New Generation, commonly known as CJNG, are the two main manufacturers and suppliers of fentanyl and meth. And although both cartels are based in Mexico, according to this DEA threat assessment map, both cartels have a strong network in Florida. They have street dealers that are not only standing on street corners selling drugs, but also using social media platforms um, in order to, to stay a little more anonymous. The recent DEA report revealed fentanyl seizures have doubled in the past two years. More than 13,000 kilos of powdered fentanyl were seized last year, along with 79 million fentanyl pills. Seizures in 2023 tripled from our seizures in 2021 of fentanyl pills. Last year, 30% of fentanyl powder contained xylazine. That's up 25% from the year before. Xylazine is a sedative that veterinarians use on animals, but drug dealers are mixing it with fentanyl to create what's known on the streets as Trank. Trank gives users a greater high for less than the cost of pure fentanyl. According to this threat assessment map, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey lead all other states regarding xylazine seizures. <laughs> Illegal narcotics and guns and gun violence. It's very rare for us to make a drug arrest and guns not be involved. But not just any guns. According to the latest threat assessment, there has been a 31% increase in people who are part of the drug trade using firearms that have been later determined to be ghost guns that were made from a 3D printer or kits purchased online. The threat assessment also revealed something more sinister, a preliminary ATF report that shows a 180% increase in stolen semi-automatic firearms that have been converted into full automatic weapons. Drug traffickers... Um, know that it's a deadly game that they're in and they carry the most sophisticated, uh, most powerful weapons in order to protect their enterprise. Sadly, the threat assessment revealed a nationwide increase in children being sent to the hospital after ingesting marijuana edibles that are marketed to look like candy, snacks and cereal. It's really exploded since 2018. Florida Poison Control spokesperson Michael McCormick says that although children are getting access to their parents' medically prescribed THC marijuana edibles, they are also getting easy access to hemp-based edibles. They're sold without a prescription. They're not a medical marijuana. Um, so you can buy them in a gas station, a smoke shop, uh, a convenience store. Last year alone, 792 children in Florida were sent to the emergency room after ingesting a marijuana edible. So far this year, 158 children under the age of six have ended up in the hospital after ingesting a marijuana edible. Poison Control is projecting that number to be above 1,000 by the end of the year based on weekly and sometimes daily calls to the Poison Control Center. We could be looking at more than uh, two children a day, potentially. Um, in the state of Florida this year. While there are laws in place that prevent him from talking about specific child cases, he was able to reveal something more parents may not be aware of, especially when it comes to children bringing marijuana edibles to school. We have had a number of schools. We've had after school programs. When you look across the state where we end up with, with multiple children and sometimes they'll go on and transport the children. So we might get calls from multiple hospitals um, and you wouldn't even know it went back to, to one location. 
This is why parents who use marijuana are encouraged to store their edibles in a locked medicine box or bag. Now, sadly, many of uh, younger children who are taken to the hospital after ingesting their parents' edibles, unfortunately, end up in the ICU. Reporting live, Eric Avigny, Channel 4, The Local Station. Eric, talk some specifics with us and a little bit about how the edibles affect children differently than adults. Okay, so to answer that question, let's use uh, the uh, the gummies as an example. According to poison control, uh, one one gummy is equivalent to a, an, an adult dose or a dose for an adult. But when you think about edibles and children, children may see edibles, uh, especially those gummies, they may see those as candy. And if they think of those as candy, they're going to eat more than one of those gummies. And when they consume more of those gummies, that is when uh, it becomes a little, it becomes a, a, a more dangerous situation for them but, but within 30 minutes they're sick and depending upon how many of those gummies they have eaten they could be so sick that uh, they require immediate medical attention. Eric thanks for putting that in perspective. Eric Avigny reporting live tonight.